Electronics have limits in professional fishing. We're not doing the intro. We're, we're not what? doing it. We're, we're skipping that. So, <laughs> what, so what just happened? Well, Jeff like all spazzed out on his, today. It just all went black. Look, you can see it right there. My new <laughs> iOS. We updated everything. Jeff doesn't oh, like we, to ever. We don't have our video. He doesn't like to ever test matter. anything before we actually sit down at 7 o'clock. <laughs> it's updated a million times before. Whatever. Just make a post. Say this is a test. So if you want to see the this intro. This is not a test. <laughs> there's 103 intros prior if you want to go back and watch it. <laughs> He's talking about just our intro video. So apparently it, it conked out on us or something. See, tonight. the English Choice logo went fine in the corner. I don't know. It's, it's not on my screen. <laughs> I, just wait. That's delayed. Oh, <laughs> good, good point. I don't see an English Choice logo. So if y'all missed the topic tonight, it's a hot topic. We touched base uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, t the week before last. Sorry we missed last week's show. Jeff had something come up last minute and he could not be here. And he that actually, was a championship flag football did game. How'd they go? How'd it go? We had a game, didn't we? All right, fair enough. Fair so enough. Absolutely, we you sound won. like the Brown huh? James or something. Over so there. we got smoked our first game by this team. You mean regular season or playoffs smoked. or what? First game of the season. Okay. They had like two or three weeks practice. We had like two days. We got drilled. Then we came back, won every game, and then beat them in the championship. All right. Good job. Good gotcha. season. Hey, Trevor, I saw you at Chins the other day, too. I just – sorry, I apologize because you can't tell who <laughs> anybody is anymore with these masks on. So, um, you can notice me because I don't wear one. But, <laughs> you rebel. You rebel, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know if y'all heard did – they, did they get to hear the topic? They just didn't see the <laughs> intro. No, they heard the topic. Okay. So yeah. – Perfect. Hot topic tonight. and um, Semi-hot. Well, back to last week, the reason we didn't have a show, not just Jeff had something come up, but Jeff was like, hey, Matt. And he knew not to even call thrift about this, but he's like, "What? <laughs> hey, I can meet you at the studio, and I can show you a few little things. It's real simple to do. And I stopped him right there. I said, absolutely not. And he said, y'all could have a show without me there. I said, absolutely not. Because if something was to happen. Oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> next time, call thrift then. Hey, if we, we may have to hold the phone in front of us, but we, we'd do it. Uh, but that's probably what it would come down yeah, to. Exactly. <laughs> well, we could do it. Literally, I was planning on FaceTiming you to walk you through how to do it. Yeah. No, do you it. Could, it's only like three buttons. And yeah, I but, can't even do it, so it doesn't really matter. No, my thing was, <laughs> I like for everything to go smoothly, and so does everybody watching and listening. And I was scared to death that if something happened, we would thrift and I would just have to go home. <laughs> so we We'd make it work. We wouldn't know what to do. But, yeah, we could actually – that's probably what we do. I'd hold a camera and just film thrift, and he could flip, flip it around on me. <laughs> You'd film me, and then I'd film you with mine simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's up, Scott? He said he sent you a message, Smoke. Scott Fell did. All right, where's it at? I'll gladly look at <laughs> <Just> it. <laughs> Uh, William Jackson wanted to know if you shot any deer in the butt this year. He didn't I have butt, not. I've only shot one, and it was a good, clean kill. It was. It was. I can uh, attest to that. What's up, David Craig? Uh, Josh White. That's funny because um, we've actually talked about that. But the topic tonight, which we touched on a little bit last time we were in the studio, is should electronics – and y'all keep in mind, should electronics have limits – in professional fishing. Now, I'm not talking about Bass Opens or Toyota Series or BFLs or club tournaments. Top tier level. The very top tier level. Yeah. Only the top tier level, okay? Should it have limits? <laughs> and that is going to be... y'all hit us with your thoughts, too. I mean, just give us a yes or no so we can get an idea of what everybody's thinking just to make it interesting. Yeah, I want to know everybody's thoughts. Yeah. Especially if any professional anglers jump on here tonight. I really want to know y'all's thoughts. Can we put, like, a poll up on our page where people can... I couldn't even play the intro well, see, video. I, but okay, see, never I, mind then. I just, hear, just comment yes or no. I want to hear from <laughs> y'all, the viewers and the fans, tonight on here, why? Not say, don't, like, we, we could do a poll, but it's yes or no. Yeah. I want to know, like, if you say no, I want to know why. If you say yes, I want to know why. And I'm going to pull some of those comments, and then we're going to we're gonna have a little debate about it. Um, guys, don't, don't forget, our show is sponsored and presented by Anglers Choice Marine, who is also sponsoring our giveaway tonight. Uh, Pulse Fish Lures sponsored a giveaway at the last show. Congrats again to our boy Todd. Yeah, I, by the way, Jeff, when you yeah. screwed the pooch last Thrift. week. What? What? Go ahead. 
When you when you screwed the pooch, he's done week, something exciting. Look at and him. We could, and we could look at him. And we. Oh no! It well, says I can create a poll. He just figured out how to create a poll. I don't know. It might mess up. But go ahead. Sorry, I didn't Todd was going to be our special guest. <laughs> that I'm was sorry. the I'm look sorry, of Todd. sheer we joy. Had to, we yeah. had to win a sheer championship. Joy. I thought. I thought he just. I don't. Never mind. Um, Todd was supposed to be our special guest last week. Congrats to Todd Goad, uh, yes, sir. owner of Pulse Fish Lures. Finished second in the All-American, and he's not here to talk about it. He couldn't be here tonight. His plan was to come last week, but I'll go ahead and give him the props. I know he caught some fish on a worm and things like that, but he did catch some key fish on a one-eighth ounce, correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, Pulse Fish Lures jig head over brush, big brush, and caught a couple key fish. Just about won that All-American. I mean, he was this close, and Todd and I had a conversation about it. And I he, thought he had it. He was very comfortable with second place. I mean, when it's your time, it's your time. He's a believer in that. I believe in that. You believe in that. I believe in that um, wholeheartedly. And, you know, he had a great tournament. Second place in the All-American is uh, nothing to hang your head about. It's a phenomenal finish, and congrats again to you, Todd. Um, we still have the Pulse Fish Lures discount code uh, pinned at the top of our Facebook page, LTF20, 20% off your order, and Todd's living proof that if you don't have some in your box this time of year, you're missing out, especially that little 8-ounce dude. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And so be sure to take advantage of that. I think I think uh, Todd's running that code till the end of this month. It might extend it till Christmas, but we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, English Choice locations, guys, Martinsville, Lexington, and Spindale. Be sure to visit those locations if you're in the market for a new boat or a new, a new uh, UTV. Yep. Which I actually You got bought one last year, didn't you? About a year ago. Yeah. Yep. Got one of the I may trackers. be looking to get me one from him. You, here you're going to have to get one. Yeah, I think I Drift, am. He's buying a bunch of land, and he doesn't have any way to get around. No, I'm not buying so, a bunch of land. <laughs> uh, hey, I got two good feet. <laughs> matter of fact, I asked him the other day, I said, what are you going to do when you go way down there on the other end of your land in a box stand and shoot one? He said, well, I'm going to call you to bring the tracker out there and go get it. So, <laughs> which I would be there. I'd be there for him. He's been there for me before in the Deer Woods. Um so there's Todd coming and said three key fish the first day came on the eighth ounce, and uh, and he said thanks. It was a great week. Uh, absolutely. And also a shout out to Justin Kimmel who won the co-anger side. I think he works for Bass University. Oh yeah, our boy Justin. That's yeah, with Bass U. That's right. He did. Had I a great tournament. And, and he's a he's got a boat. He, that, that boy's too good to be. Oh, he's a heck of a fish. Yeah, he, he's a heck Justin. You're gonna have to. You had to step it up because you've been kicking butt <laughs> in the back of the boat for a while now. I think he's won four or five tournaments in the back of the boat. He has, including a all lot American. of money. Yeah, that's, he won what fifty grand? Yeah, for first place in all American. Yeah, it's a pretty dang good paycheck for a co owner for back of the boat. Um, pretty awesome. Uh, How's yeah. the pole coming along, Jeff? Did you give up on it? I mean, I don't. You think I should try it? Yeah, do it. Knock it out. It could wipe the entire show. Off. <laughs> right, if we wipe the show off, we'll we'll do a restart. We'll come back. Can we not do a restart? Well, if not, that we can do whatever we want. Exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to try to go back and use some of these comments. So y'all be careful with what you push. No, nah, we're there. good. It's Hitting buttons and just I got experiment. the utmost faith in Jeff being able to do this. Um, did you see the black screen at the beginning of the show where we did technicalities? Know? Technicalities. <laughs> Uh, all, all right, right let's, let's dive into it. Oh, Justin got paired with Todd the last day. Did you yeah. know that? Yeah, him and I Todd. didn't know that. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, let's get into it. Mike Corbishley. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> Mike Corbishley's <laughs> on here, who is a uh, good friend of mine that works for Navico and Lawrence. <laughs> said there should be no limits on electronics. That's but a he's, shocker. <laughs> he's, yeah, shocker there. A uh, little bit. Bi- he said not biased at all with a, with a little laughing emoji, but, um, no, Mike, and Mike, you might you might agree on this, and this is nothing. We Brian and I talked about it before the show because I think we have a little bit different stance on it, but but very similar. Like similar. I, I think we're both on the same page with it. Yeah, and and I want y'all keep okay. So Mike Harris, I already see the comments rolling in, guys. Thanks a bunch for your uh, for your interaction. We appreciate that. That's why we do this show. Uh, he said there needs to be some some limits on technology. Fishing is open water is turning into video game fishing, and to an extent, that's correct. And all these comments are going to have some validity to them. Uh, Joe Gentry, you think electronic companies will allow organizations to cap it if it comes to well, I mean, you know, if it comes to capping electronics or Garmin, excuse me, sponsor dollars for Bass or BPT, that checkbook says there ain't no cap. Ha ha. Yeah. Well, I this is. I'm just going to go with what I feel. And this is what me and Matt talked about earlier is I don't think there should be a limit on the technology, no limit on the technology, but I do think you have to limit the, the way it's used. Like, like you have to put some sort of stipulation on it where guys can say run a maximum of 50 total inches of screen, 
where you don't have guys running four graphs up front, three or four to console. That I mean, if you do that, that that allows guys to run, you know, two 12-inch screens at bow and front with any technology that's out there. So you've got the latest and greatest technology. And what me and Matt talked about beforehand is this, it's kind of like, um, it's not a handicap, but it's kind of like uh, professional baseball. I mean, they're not allowed to use aluminum bats. It's kind of the same thing. Like, you're still able to use the technology, but you're just – there's no, limits. There's limits to it. And I, I think that that's kind of what a top tier level should be. Here's I don't have an issue with anything that's currently going on, guys. I see some comments about well now Lawrence, um now Lawrence, Hummingbird, and Garmin will all have the live sonar available, so there should not be an issue if an angler doesn't have it because of uh, because of sponsors. So yeah, so that's not really um I mean I appreciate that comment, Reed, but that's not really exactly what we mean when we say limits it's not because one angler felt it was unfair yeah. i mean we're all about equal yeah. playing field, oh. okay so and and just because i'm sponsored by lawrence if i wanted to void my contract i could go out there and buy a garment and put it on my boat if i felt like it's what i had to do okay that was this previous year and that happened not with me but it happened um anybody that follows bass fishing knows knows what happened this year and that being said moving forward and this only, guys, keep in mind, to me, it, my opinion, it only applies to the professional top tier of fishing, the Bassmaster Elites and the BPT, no other place. And the reason I don't, I don't want to limit on any other place is because I don't want to limit the industry, and I don't want to limit, limit sales. So, yes, we promote, yes, we sell, but at the same time, the buyers are all the ones in those lower levels, yeah. the club tournaments, the local fishermen. Uh, the same reason they can all still throw Alabama rigs, and we can't, okay? So talking about the aluminum bass. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Well, that's like right. the Alabama rig. Yeah. I and, mean, and, that's a perfect and example. And let's just go back and say if they eliminated the Alabama rig at every level of the sport and every team tournament trail across the country, yeah, the sales would have plummeted. Right. And it would have gone all to crap. Right? I agree. I uh, agree. We can all agree on that. So same with electronics in my mind. Now, that being said – and Brian touched on it a little bit, and I'll go even deeper saying when we don't limit technology, we don't put a limit. Now, you can't limit right. technology. You, you can't stop that. Okay, that's going to always continue yeah. to evolve. But when you're talking about a professional athlete, and I'm going to use that term loosely because not all of us look like professional athletes. I might could have been, I might a little better shape. Why are you again. looking at me? I'm not, <laughs> you mean look at Jeff? I'm, I'm in my prime. <laughs> you are. A, oh, a yeah. young 40. That just one. made me think exactly. of Fat Cat's interview at the Classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fat Cat's interview. Um, so what I'm saying is at, at the top level of any sport, whether it's golf, whether it's fishing, whether it's tennis, whether it's whatever, there's limitations on the equipment that they can use, uh, whether it's the type of bat, the type of golf club, the type of ball they hit, the type of whatever it is, okay? And the reason those are there is because these are the best in the world at what they do, okay? The more... I think you expand the electronics and the evolution of, of technology at the top tier level. I think you're going to, you're going to draw more guys off the bank. You're going to draw more guys away from that, that natural raw talent that they had before. Now I know some people are going to argue, well, you just got to adapt to the new electronics, but that's a different game than what it was the past 30 years. So it's a different type of fishing. It's a different, but you know, then you can sit there and argue. We'll say, well, I mean, it's it's just changing the sport as we know it. But and it is, yeah, but, it's changed the sport a ton. And but I think that's why the only thing you can really limit is the number of screens. Like that's about all you can limit because it doesn't matter how who's got what electronics. There's there's going to be guys that win tournaments on the bank during an offshore deal. There's there's always fish shallow, and it's going to change fish. And you know the next guys that figure out what the fish are doing now and versus what they were doing are going to come to the top of the food chain so it's like it's you know it's just a revolving cycle i mean when you when you find fish that normally don't get fished for on your electronics they're only going to be there for you for so long and then they're going to be gone they're going to be like hey i don't like getting caught all the time let's go do something different and it's going to change just like um you know try to make an example of, well i mean the a rig i mean everybody knows when it first came out it was lights out everywhere it didn't matter where you threw it and now you pretty much got to know what you're doing to to make it work in an event so it's kind of the same thing i mean those fish are going to change they're going to adapt and the anglers that adapt and change and figure out what those fish do constantly stay at the top you know the top level and i think that's that's why you see guys that have had long you know 
great careers like Larry Nixon and guys like that, I mean, they've always been at the top tier, you know, kind of seem like they've been ahead of the game versus a lot of the other anglers. I mean, they're constantly evolving, constantly figuring out the next best thing. And, you know, if you stay one or two years ahead of the curve, I mean, you're you're going to constantly out distance everybody you're fishing against. So Yeah, it, and it's going to be funny to watch. <clears throat> I mean, the way with this forward-facing sonar deal – it's changing the game a lot, and I hate I hate using game changer words and things like yeah. that. Yeah, but it it truly is because there's a ton of fish now that are being caught that were never caught before and never would have been caught before. Right, because you'd literally be out there blind casting around in twenty yeah. to thirty foot of water, you know, at random stuff. Especially when you're talking about Saint. But Claire, but if you think about things fish. like that, I mean, yes, those fish weren't targeted like they are now, but they were caught. I mean, you look at prime examples of like what David Fritz used to do back in the mid '90s with a flasher. He was catching those schools of offshore fish. Oh, yeah, but that's like a drop in the bucket compared to now, compared to the number of fish that are caught like this now. Right, yeah, yeah. but he was like he was the leading edge at that time. You know, he, w- he was catching those fish nobody else was well, fishing for. Well, he found for. a ton of those fish by just fishing. Too. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was catching fish nobody else was fishing for, and eventually that's what's going to happen with the forward-facing sonar. I mean, it's going to become more difficult to make it work like it has the last year or two. Yeah, and I, I'm, and you know, this conversation really, um, it started because I'm not necessarily thinking about what we have available right now as we speak, or even the next six months. I'm thinking more about what's going to be available and how's this going to work in five years from now or ten years from now. I know what like, I'm going to do. Like, how, like, is it going to be? A forward-facing transducer that shoots 250 feet or all the way across a creek 4K. and says largemouth bass 2.7 pounds at 4K <laughs> and tells you what to throw and you throw out there and you catch him. I mean, I'm just that's why that's where I, that's where my mind is. It could be there very easily. That's oh where, yeah, that's my point. So <laughs> at that point, at that point, what I just said, there has to be a limitation at the top level because yeah, then you're, I agree. Okay, all right. So oh we, no, I agree, agree wholeheartedly. On that. Because if it gets so, if, if our electronics take all the skill out of the game and you just got to read that graph and throw at that fish and it tells you what to throw, tells you how big he is, tell you, it tell you if he's ready to bite or not. I mean, I'm just, I don't know if you I, do Maybe that. not. Okay. Maybe that's a little far fetched. Yeah, that's a little far fetched. Never say never, dude. I mean, we got cars that are driving themselves now, okay? So, yeah, that's true. I mean, 50 that's years true. ago, <laughs> who would have thought that? I'm, I'm um, going to see if I can get Ranger to build me a glass bottom boat next year just so I can ride around and look at him. Okay, so somebody said earlier, uh, Dylan Falk, he said, <laughs> he said, I'm still trying to figure out how to turn on side scan. Can you help me? Yes, uh, Mike Corbersley's on here. Mike, <laughs> help <laughs> tell Dylan how to turn his side scan on. I'm pretty sure Dylan knows how I to do I think that. Dylan knows how. Uh, <laughs> I've seen Dylan fish. He knows. <laughs> Terry Neal has, uh, he said, first time he's caught the live show, but he's seen every single one. So thanks, Terry, for joining in. Um, yeah, I was gonna, Mark Gallup just said they have it on uh, deep sea boats. I've, I've heard of that. Have what? Like sonar that will, like I heard well, somebody. Said a thousand it's just thousand yards. <laughs> I, I heard that just forward facing sonar that shoots what? Like side a imaging and everything yards. that they could tell you know a sailfish within a mile and a half. I heard that. That's impressive. That's really impressive. I don't know if it's true, well, but I heard it. I might want to put one of those on the right shirt. And I also heard they cost like two hundred something thousand so. dollars. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. That's a different. That's a different kind of man's game out there offshore. <laughs> I don't fall into that. And game they may anymore. none of that be true, but that's what I heard. Them so. gallops might can have. May they might can have that nice <laughs> stuff on their boats, but we got to run. We got to run the small stuff. Uh, first time. Uh, let's see. Barry Dick said he's a little late to the show. He's helping feed his first grandson, who's one oh, week old Oh, congratulations. Today. Congrats to Barry. Um, Terry Neal said at the pro level, no limit. At the AAA level, not fair to the co-angler in the back or to other boater that can't afford it. Well, AAA level, I have to say, I, I agree to disagree. Um, when you keep, because the AAA level guys are trying to take, most of them are fishing AAA level to try to make it to the next level. Because, I mean, m- most of the ones I know, Right. You weren't listening. No, I wasn't. I was I reading agree, Fisher. I, I, was, Mark, I was reading about the transducer because Mark, Mark responded. That, it drops out of the bottom of the boat and it's two hundred thousand. So yeah, Mark I says two hundred thousand. I heard correct. Fisher's on here too. He's like, we should get it. Yeah. I agree, Fisher. Oh, Mark's son, Fisher said. <laughs> I agree, <coughs> Fisher. I'm gonna call your daddy in the morning. That's a great Christmas present. And we're gonna that talk be about a good. great Christmas. Present. Christmas is right around the corner. And talk if Mark if Daddy won't get it, talk to Uncle Bruce. Uncle Bruce might throw between it on the us. two of them. It's guaranteed <laughs> lock. You'll get it. Uh, so, um, 
Well, Josh Ingram, that's correct. He said, I've had them all. You can look at fish all day, but that don't mean you can catch them. And, and like I said, Josh, we're not exactly talking about what's available today as we speak as opposed to what right. might be coming in the future, too. Um, which is I'm it. excited to see what's coming in the future. Oh, like like every year, I'm like, all right, they've topped out. They can't possibly come up with anything cooler, and then they do. Yeah. So no, you, yeah, the second you think <laughs> it can't get any better, it's going to get better. I promise. Um all right, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's several pro anglers out there that run three brands on yeah. their boats. And um, I'm I used to run two brands like back five or six years ago. I mean, I used to do the same thing, and uh, now I'm just with Humminbird. But you know, I, I don't I don't think there's that's why I'm saying you can't limit you know the technology or what people want to run, but you, you could limit the actual screen size or the number of graphs. I mean, where you don't have guys up there on the front of the boat. I mean, theoretically right now you could mount a 60 inch flat screen on the front deck and, you know, cast, (laughs) cast your graph to it. I mean, you could do that. Um, Andrew Alexander, what's up, Andrew? He said, what, what about the aqua view? Like what Gussie uses is that too far advanced technology, literally a camera you drop down. So they've had that thing for like 20 years now. Yeah. Um, it's, it's gotten a little better over time. The problem with that aqua view is, uh, you know, you can use it and it's perfectly legal, but that thing will get you in way more trouble. Oh, it, you can drop it down there and you can <laughs> see them with that. Ca- and it's different than the forward facing sonar because you're right on top of them. And depending on like where it really shines is like really super clear water, smallmouth fisheries. Cause a lot of smallmouth you see, you can end up catching and blah, 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 so on and so forth. But you go out here to like Lake Norman <laughs> yeah, and you drop it down in a brush pond, you see a six pound largemouth sitting there. You it ain't going to catch you six it. months to catch that fish. <laughs> yeah, you, ain't, you ain't catching that fish. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, with the forward-facing sonar, the difference in that is you can actually, you know, watch watch them how watch how they move, watch how they react to your lure. Right, you can kind of tell their mood. Right, you can tell their mood. Yeah, yeah. you could drop that camera down there, and it's not like you can see him smiling or frowning or yeah. if, he's, <laughs> if he's real excited or or whatever. Yeah. And a lot of fish are spooked by that thing too. You know, there's a lot of largemouth and other fish that are skittish on that thing. Um, it, you might not necessarily see them, but when you're dealing with the forward-facing sonar, it's an entirely different ball game. Um, <clears throat> now. Uh, like I said, St. Lawrence River, that's a place where that aqua view, I know for a fact, has been a big player for guys like Gussie and oh, some, yeah. other, um, some other guys that have utilized it. Uh, but there again, that's smallmouth. And, and the clearer the water, the better that thing is. You know, if you go out here to, to Moss Lake where you get down to 20 feet and it, the silt's so thick You can thick see about there, this far. Yeah, you can't see your hand. Like, <laughs> I've, I've scuba dived in Moss Lake years ago, and when you get down there about, past about 15 feet, the silt, like, you might be able to see the bottom four foot of water over here on the yeah. bank. You get down there 15 feet deep, and you put your hand in front of you, you can't even see it hardly. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just nasty. Um, light penetration. It's no good. Huh? Oh, light so, penetration. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, Chris Lindahl, my man, that's, that's the guy that won the trip with us. Uh, what's yep. up, Chris? And um, we'll, uh, we'll be trying to work, uh, work through that at the first year, uh, hopefully sometime in the springtime. Let's see. I'm still reading comments. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of good feedback, guys. We appreciate all the interaction tonight. <laughs> what you what you see? William Jackson said the color selector should not be legal. The color selector, <clears throat> the one <laughs> the one that takes a water clarity and tells yeah, you what color. it always tells you to throw a purple worm. <laughs> Is that what it does? I think so. I never had one, but it seems like it would always tell you to throw one versus the other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Sounds like stock car and NASCAR racing argument. Uh, to an extent, Zane, you got yeah, a good point. Yeah, that is exactly really what it. Point. That's I mean, exactly what it is. NASCAR drivers are very limited on how their cars can be set up and what kind of equipment they can have on those cars. And the reason being is because they all want them on a perfectly equal playing field with the exact same equipment um, because they want it to come down to 100% driving skill. Um, so but that that is a very valid argument. It does not come down to that in most cases. Well, see, well, and, that's, that's, the that's, attempt, that's arguable. The <laughs> but, attempt is there yeah, as a sanctioning debatable. body to make it an even playing but field. But that'll never work in fishing because they're on a very controllable environment. Yes. They're all going in the same direction around the same but circle. But money always wins in NASCAR. <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah. Now you have a pretty good point. I like the way I mean, it really do. is. It's under it's, a controlled it, environment. I mean, they're all going the same direction in a little bitty circle. Yeah. I mean... The money always wins. We're fishing, you the know, wherever we want. I mean, Bank accounts are not. Right. I mean, that would be like putting us on a 
in a little pond in the shape of a circle and having us all throw the same bait. And like Scott Fell said, pros should have to use Barbie Superman poles with four pound line. <laughs> I've actually been in a tournament that required that one one time. <laughs> oh, you, you did. See it on YouTube. Scott Martin Challenge. A, I remember Scott that. Martin Challenge about oh probably it's just been eight or nine, ten years ago. Andy Montgomery and myself were set up by Scott Martin and Jacob Wheeler and would have beat them if it wasn't for that little rule <laughs> they threw in there. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> Jeremy said, let everybody go offshore and leave my bank fish alone, laugh out loud. <laughs> Andy Baker said, I'm with you on this, sir. So <clears throat> the thing is, and Brian, Brian brought up this point earlier, so it, 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 the same thing happened with the Alabama rig, same thing happened – I'm not going to necessarily say with the with the bladed jig, chatterbait style lures, but I have seen fish get very conditioned, so is Brian, to oh, certain yeah. techniques, certain things that really take off. All of a sudden, it's like a cure-all for like six months, and then you can't catch a fish for between here and California on it. And Or I've seen guys like the spinnerbait. Man, I've seen the spinnerbait start winning some money and winning some tournaments. Yeah, because it's not... People aren't throwing it like they used right. to. Right, and electronics could do the same thing. So when these offshore fish start getting more targeted, uh, targeted more frequently, caught more frequently, um, you know, it might not only move some of those fish around, but you can't just randomly start laughing without without an explanation. Yeah, Jeremy Conqueror says, "What's NASCAR?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they're they're yeah they got their own set of problems over there. Um, Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're Go good. Ahead. You're good. I mean, oh yeah, get, happy Thanksgiving, I, everybody. I get it from both sides. <laughs> Um, I, I hadn't said nothing. Not tonight. I've never said anything. <laughs> uh, but like we were talking about earlier, I think uh, the more those fish get caught, the more educated they become, the harder they become to get caught, to getting caught. Um, then they start moving around, and, and maybe the bank fishermen start to shine a little bit more. Uh, you just you never know until it starts happening. You think it's the best thing since sliced bread, and then all of a sudden, a year later, you can't hardly catch a fish doing it. Yeah, but it's if you go back and look, I mean that's essentially like now I'm gonna I don't know the exact percentage, but I'd say forty to fifty percent of the events that are won professional level events, they're won by somebody doing something that kind of nobody else is doing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean you've kind of got fish to yourself. I mean fish that other people have overlooked or fish that are doing something they're not supposed to be doing so nobody's really looking for them and if if you can find that it doesn't matter what you've got on your boat i mean you're gonna win most and, of the time and you know this is this is a <laughs> what really blew my mind and this is this is what separates a good fisherman uh from a great fisherman in a tournament to where everybody is truly on an equal playing field so it's no secret that patrick walters won that tournament like fork on forward facing sonar right? oh yeah all right now I didn't have it, and some guys didn't have it, but there's a lot of guys that did. Right. Patrick used his knowledge and skill. It's just, somebody said this earlier. You know, when you see him on that forward-facing sonar, you still got to figure out how to make him bite. Right. He was able to make the right lure selection at the right time and adjust his cadence by watching how that fish react. And it blew my mind that there was 50 other guys in that tournament that had that exact same setup on their boat. Nobody else figured and it out. didn't tap into that bite because it's not like it was just a fluke. It's not like he just caught yeah. a few. No. He, he smashed He, he lapped a few. Right. Yeah. Um, so that kind of blew my mind. And that's not a shot against all the other guys, but that's just that's just taking Patrick's forward-facing sonar and the knowledge that he has to use it, which all those guys do. Yeah. But then that's taking Patrick's skill and his adaptability and his lure selection choice and his his it's, timing and his approach and his and, and his his uh, blending it all together and and putting it all together and making yeah. it work and not just making it work but making it work on another level that's that's why i think from a standpoint of limitations it should just be limited to like four graphs the number of units yeah you can have four graphs two up front two at the console or the amount of inches because like you said before somebody's like yeah because yeah because you might want to run us i mean well hummingbird just came out with a new 15 inch screen in the helix series yeah, i Lawrence mean has lawrence has got a big screen garmin's got a four, 14 yeah so i mean you you could i don't know if you would need to limit the amount of inches but just limit it to the number of units itself where you can have two up front and two at the console yeah and I think the only way you could get into where you would have to limit the uh, the size of the graphs is if it they did get so ridiculously big they were 
you know, hindering your view while driving the boat. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, that would be the obvious. <laughs> so it was funny because uh, Andrew Upshaw at the time, and uh, him and I were rooming together on the FLW tour, and he had one of the new, and I think it was Garmin. It was like a 15 or 16-inch yeah. screen. And he, he ran a basket at the time, and it sits it, – the driver's seat of the basket sits a lot lower than a Ranger. Right. And, you know, Andrew's not a tall guy, and I'm not picking on his height yeah, or nothing, he's... but when he sat down – and that screen, the way it set up, dude, it was really hard for him to see over that screen. Oh, I guarantee. If it was a 20-inch screen, I mean, it would have been hard for me to see over it. I have a real short torso. I mean, I'm six one, but my legs are really long. So when I sit down, I mean, we're all the same height, basically, when I right. sit down. And that being said, though, I mean, it really, like, it, that's a 16-inch screen, dude. Yeah. Like, why, why are y'all looking at each other? Like, I'm not. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm stuck on I'm the short watching. torso I, comment. I mean, honestly. I was actually I thinking have, about the exact same thing. I have a really short <laughs> Torso's right here, guys. So, <laughs> no, it's just, like, I've never some, heard somebody <laughs> say they had a uh, short, short torso, torso before. Short torso. Uh, it's just the way it looks like God made me. I, I mean, it's a three with a short torso. <laughs> 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 That's just to make any sense. Dang, I'm, I'm, uh, I got short legs and a short torso, I guess. <laughs> Austin said, he said he somehow feels that eventually it's going to be so easy to be on the top level with electronics, you're not going to need skills anymore, and I could be wrong, but I can see that happening. I disagree with that. Well, now, we're not talking about today necessarily either austin but we're talking about like the scenario i threw out earlier and you did agree with that if it gets to a point to where it's like you know telling you what to throw and how to adapt yeah. and like all that stuff like it, it really does take a lot of the, the thinking and the decision making out of the game that's when uh but back to like P patrick's victory i mean the way he demolished everybody was he was able to use that electronics and at the same time using his electronics he was able to uh, use his raw talent, decision-making skills, and, and adaptability to that current situation in order to catch those fish. Yeah. Um, and obviously there was tons of – and we knew, like everybody in the field knew that those fish were suspended out there in that timber. It's just nobody figured out how to catch them like he did. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. Uh, let's see. Speaking <laughs> – Mike Harris said, speak, speak – y'all, all right. Y'all call it out. Happened to Joe Gentry? Yeah. <laughs> call it out. Don't just I'm giggle. <laughs> He said, I'm 6'5 and 75% leg. I feel you, Matt. <laughs> See? There you go. Joe knows what I'm talking about. Did he say leg or legs? Leg. Oh. Well, congrats, oh. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Mike, Lordy. Mike Harris. <laughs> Proceed with the con. <laughs> Mike Harris said, speaking of Ranger, did both of you make the quote cut with them for next year? It's not a secret now. A lot of guys, it's out of the bag. A lot of guys are leaving Ranger. A lot of guys maybe got... Uh, cut loose from Ranger, whatever it may be. I think I can speak for Brian when I can say we're both. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm running a Ranger. Still next Still with year. Ranger boats. Proud to be with Ranger boats, and we'll be running Rangers next year for. But my shoot, it'd be my twelfth year running a Ranger. This will I be think. my. I got my got first Ranger in '06, and I've had one every year since. So. Oh, where's that? Fourteen say? years. Okay, we're four. I said twelve. Yep. Four, we're fourteen <laughs> years. '06. I've been running them since '06 myself. Yep. So. Perfect. 14 years running Ranger boats. Uh, and, yes, Mike, we will still have uh, both. We'll have both our we'll both have our boats. And well, I'll have mine, I think, second week of December. You'll have yours before that probably. Yeah, I think mine's actually at Angler's Choice now. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. I, uh, I hadn't got it yet. Is yours in Spindale or Martinsville? Or? Uh, Martinsville. Okay, cool. All right. Um, yeah, they're going to rig it up. And that's another thing. Angler's Choice, you having trouble rigging grass and boats? <laughs> they do that. They do a good job, too. Absolutely. Very uh, clean. That, that's one of my biggest pet peeves because I, I used to rig a lot of my graphs myself because I, I have certain ways I like things done. And I let Angler's Choice rig my boat last year. They did a great job. Everything's nice and clean. And they're going to rig it for me again this year. 100%. Same, same here. Uh, John Morris said he honestly doesn't think any electronics should be used. Just his opinion, of course, and we respect that, John. Yeah. I said, got but I think that shows the most skill with zero electronics on the boat. Yeah, but you, you've got to have electronics just from a safety standpoint. I mean, you well, don't, like a GPS. Yeah, sure. or GPS, or and and a, I mean, you don't want to run across a a sandbar when that you don't know there if it's only a foot deep and throw yourself out of the boat and kill yourself. Either. Okay, so all that aside, just say you're allowed to have a graph that helps you navigate the waterway safely. Yeah, and you just have that. Do you think that shows the most skill if everybody just had that and nothing else? No, I do not. Because that is a skill set. I mean, you look at, I mean, knowing electronics is a definite, that's a huge asset in bass fishing, and it is a definite skill set. I mean, just like 
flipping mats or bed fishing. I mean, you've got guys that excel at bed fishing that always do good in a bed fishing tournament. Guys that excel anytime it's a flipping bite, you know, punching but heavy grass. But none of this grass. that you're saying is electronics related. It's all no, but you you've got guys that dominate electronics events. I mean, you look at uh, Jason Lambert, you look at Mark Rose, you know, the offshore guys that have really put in the time honing those skills, and I mean that's where they excel. This is interesting. Keith Wood said, what about breaking it up? Use whatever you want during practice, then only like your traditional 2D sonar during the tournament. That's interesting. That's it. I haven't heard I that mean, before, but that's interesting. No, I mean, that's interesting, but I don't see how you I – don't, I don't like that. I don't like <laughs> it. Uh, see, oh, Mike C. writes on here. What's up, Mike? He said, new technology – is a lot like <laughs> old technology. The key is to learn how to use it. The people that I put agree. in the most time to learn it does the best. That is very true. Unless you don't have it. Then you're just screwed. <laughs> well, no, not really. Because it, dep- you, it depends you, on the tournament. You can always com- compete. I mean, you can always compete. There's always enough fish doing enough different things. You can compete no matter what's going on, what lake you're on, what area of the country. There's always fish you can compete. You may not find them, and you may not compete, but they're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 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 specifically speaking to the, the St. Clair event, there was a few like river fish that were caught. Yeah, not you know, not counting the the forward facing sonar, but like forty of the top fifty were forward facing sonar guys. Yeah. Um, to your point, yes, there was some fish there to be caught, uh, to and be to competitive, do, and to do well. But in a in a situation like that, it was a lot easier to access them with that specific type setup. Um, and it was a lot quicker and more efficient and so, so on and so forth. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you're right. There's, there's always a way. Uh, there's always a way because fish are in every depth of every lake right. all the time. Um, sometimes they're catchable, sometimes they're not, but that's, uh, that's our job to figure out how to catch them. Let's see. Uh, Dave Tinsman said, should there be a limit at the BFL level? And, and we both agree that there, there shouldn't be. Um, the BFL guys, along with a lot of the club level guys, a lot along uh, uh, along with a lot of the local team tournament guys, um, are some of the biggest customers of this industry. And it what, right. what it's what keeps it afloat. That's the core group. And um, you know, I, I think when you start limiting stuff there, then you start hindering sales. And um, yeah, I think that creates a whole different yeah. And you set of you, you never want to not reward innovation. I mean, you want people to constantly. I mean, that's kind of the whole purpose in life is to make things easier and make things better than they were before we, we can't stop that right i mean yeah you can never just like yeah like you'll never reach a point like all right i'm done yeah let's just call it quits <laughs> <clears throat> um tony lawson had a good point said you can't afford a graph how can you afford to tournament fish <laughs> well you got a very valid point Tony. <laughs> um let's see uh Oh, back to what, my buddy Josh White that was on here earlier. He said, uh, he said he's a big deer hunter, so he said, should electronics be used in deer hunting? Now, this is interesting because Josh has utilized drones lately with deer hunting. I didn't think you could do that. A little guns on them? Well, what are you talking about? No, not sh- <laughs> Gunships. <laughs> Deploy the gunship. I could probably, for, I could probably fit a rifle on my For drone. locating uh, dead deer for scouting an area if it's private land and you own it yeah of course you can. okay i didn't now, know you can't you can't invade like like private property with a drone yeah. i mean that's illegal yeah there's all kinds of laws and regulations i'm sure it's by state uh, i hope i'm not getting josh in <laughs> some kind of legal trouble right now by saying <laughs> I, I like what tony said tony lawson said there should be rear facing sonar so i can see the fish i can't catch <laughs> the ones you already passed yeah <laughs> Just turn it on after you go 100 yards down the bank and it probably hurts your feelings. It hurt all our feelings. I sure. do that a lot when I throw somewhere and don't get a bite and then I troll over and be like, oh, well, there they are. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's see. Um, Mark Harmon, not necessarily true. He said other pro athletes are not denied top-of-the-line equipment. To an extent, they are. It depends on the sport. Um there are ways. There's equipment in golf. There's equipment in baseball. There's equipment in tennis. There's equipment in all those sports that could actually further their ability to whether it's hit a ball further. Steroids. Um, well, steroids. That, you're, I mean, I mean, you're talking about. Well, I mean. Maybe know, I need to get on steroids so I can throw there. a crankbait like 500 yards. <laughs> 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 it, steroids aren't illegal in bass fishing. I mean. let, let me. You mean they're not illegal? 
I don't think so. What's I mean, it's technically not in their rules. We don't exactly. That's what I'm saying. Um, I, I might show up next year and sling a crankbait like I can't, 400 yards. I can't wait to see you on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this. This is going to be great. I'll pay for them just, just to see you. I ain't taking them, but I'm just saying. <laughs> we could if we wanted to. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, oh, so that got that got uh, Scott Finney said, I've listened from the beginning, first time live. Thanks, Scott. He said, live in Asheville, he said, uh, North Carolina, can you tell me why Norman was so muddy? Hurricane. We had a hurricane. Yeah, like, like well, Tyler Callaway responded yep. already, because it rained 400 inches. Yes, it rained 400 inches it in rained like a, a day and a half. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> very fast. Um, we didn't talk about this, and maybe we can use this for another topic on another episode. I know we're... Yeah, we're about 45, 46 minutes deep right now, but uh, Eric Stanbury wanted to know our thoughts on the F1 stocking on Norman. Oh, did we touch on that a little bit last episode? Yeah, they've already been eaten by spots. Eating, we, we, eating. Eaten, Me and however. Matt, Matt and I, eating, <laughs> yeah. eating. Same thing. Tomato, <laughs> tomato. I love what you just, just know said. They're they're gone. Gone. Elab- That's all that Elaborate matters. Elaborate on what you just, just said. Just know they're they've gone. They've already been eaten by spots. Yes. So they were all 7 to 12 inches. They've probably still been eaten by spots. <laughs> Well, they were all. I think they they tagged all of them. To, well, that doesn't make. They put, the seven put, inches they got put, eight by spots for sure. They should have put transmitters. The up. ones bigger than seven inches probably got eight by flathead catfish. So how do you spell Aiton so we can get another shirt out of this? Aiton, I think A T E N. Aiton. Cool. Sounds I good to me. So. Yeah. That's Y'all want an Aiton shirt? <laughs> <laughs> they done got Aiton. So, <laughs> let's just say they put radio transmitters in those little left ones. If a spot was to eat one of them, do you think that transmitter would still pick up inside his belly? Until he pooped it out, yes. So, it'd swim around wherever the spot went for yeah. a while. Yeah. Well, if it got stuck in there, I guess. I guess it'd the be there. Interesting. It, oh, dang it. I just lost my feed. Gosh. Did I lose mine? I got mine. No, no, no. no. I didn't lose it. I uh, actually he, like, he hit a button. I, I hit a button. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here scrolling through the comments and, uh, and and picking stuff out. So, Brian, while I'm getting back, you can. <laughs> you can I mean, I think it. we've touched on it. I mean, there's no right and wrong answer. I mean, you can't um, you can't not allow and you know kind of ban new technology. You, you've got to allow it. I mean, should could they maybe put stipulations on how it's presented like as far as screen number of screens that's about the only thing they could do <laughs> yeah scott fell said steve see steroids hurts your vocabulary <laughs> oh man i've never um, taken steroids in my life <laughs> i believe that i believe that <laughs> um that's just for me looking at you but <laughs> <laughs> raymond jones said is a 2021 bass schedule info out it is not but we have got note that it is should be out first week of december um, along with hopefully the open schedules and everything else. All right, uh, keep on scrolling, guys. We appreciate <laughs> all the all the feedback. This has been a, a good conversation. Yeah. Hey, did you ever get the poll up, Jeff? Do you really want me to try? Never. Not, there's yeah, not going to be a poll. I mean, I've only show. asked him like four times, and it's not happened. Hey, so shut it down. Let's do it. Every, every time I ask him, he's he just. I mean, what's your options when it says add poll? What? <laughs> Look at him over there, dude. He's, he's deep it's too that. late now, Jeff. It's too late. Just don't worry about it. You, oh, they're typing code or something. He's fixing to hack. Anybody that's watching, he's fixing to hack, hack into y'all's bank account. Hey. <laughs> I've only done Not that. really. I've y'all stay on. Hey. I've only done just, that twice. It's we'll try to have a poll up on the Let's Talk Fish page after the show. So just visit the page. He's sitting there working on it right now. And see what you got. I have no idea. We do have trivia uh, giveaway tonight, Aaron. Thank you for uh, reminding me. But at the end of the show, we do have a trivia question, uh, and we'll be giving away an Angler's Choice shirt and an Angler's <laughs> Choice hat to the winner. Uh, Ray, Ray. <laughs> 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 that. That's all we want to know. Uh, limit electronics in pro fishing. I mean, that's the whole. That's what the whole show is about, of course. But that's confusing, though. Limiting, <laughs> li- limiting, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Benjamin Ott just said... I mean, they already regulate. I mean, we've got a horsepower regulation. We've got a type of boat regu- regulation. I mean, so that's pretty similar. If you if you want to right. argue about something, and, because but, somebody jumps in a jet boat and it definitely makes the playing field uneven. Right. Because I you mean, can it's somewhere you can't. 
it could but i I still think you the only way you could do it is limit the number of screens or the amount the screen size or something like that so you want me to create this and see what happens create it you are the creator of let's talk fish create if the show if, crashes it's stress if fall. it crashes we'll be back in a minute chris i've never said, done this it ain't gonna new shirt hit go jeff raping nature on the front eight and eight and roids on the back <laughs> <laughs> I literally have to go back and watch 103 shows just to get all the t-shirts. I should trademark all Daniel my Daniel Kim's on here and says he misses sun drops. You Daniel, not, I'm sending you a sun drop. I say, you're not sending the man some sun I'm getting drop. ready to click create. Mask. Let's see what happens. You want to? Create. You're the creator. Create, sir. I don't know what it's going to do. I mean, what good's a creator if it don't create? I just created it. I don't know what it did. <laughs> oh, we got, we got a little tip from Mr. Bill Laws tonight. He said, old school Cordell spot, two inches long, has number eight hooks. That hold nothing. <laughs> Put a six on the belly. School and bass killer. Break there you down. go. All right. I just created it. I don't know where it is, though. All right, perfect. We got it created. If you can find <laughs> Somewhere. it. Somewhere. If you Reynolds. can find it, go fill out the poll. <laughs> Sydney Reynolds said again, for the ones who have issues with the size and the number of graphs, look this song up. $5 fine for whiners. He said enjoy. All right, I'm going to have to do that after the show. Check that song out. <laughs> Uh, limit. Uh, Tony Lawson said limit <coughs> transducers again, which is uh, um, Chris said nothing happened, Jeff. <laughs> well, I see it on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reed hey, we he, got it popped up on his poll is up. Oh, Mike said there we go. Up. All right, polls up. What poll is up? So are now, you telling me I it got, pops up on all y'all screens, but not ours? So we can, can we even see the answers? Yeah, where's oh, it no, I mean, no, I mean, it, it will. <laughs> All right, they, they, we're getting some votes coming through. I got 20 it's votes. It's not on my screen. It's right here. We refresh. 21 oh, votes. It's 38% and 62%. There wow. we go. This is awesome. So can you Good job, Creator Jeff. Confirm that, but it just showed up on your <laughs> screens. Absolutely. Yeah, poll, polls on everybody's screen, and they're voting right now. John. <laughs> I don't have a poll anyway. John said you need to limit the rods on the front deck. No. We'll do that. We'll poll that next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll pull that I next week. Say that out loud, in case thrift. We're gonna have to pull every show now. This is awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. Oh, Benji Winkler said there's little purple lines everywhere on his screen. What'd you do to his screen? Purple lines. Oh, you must have been the one whose bank account he got into, Benji. Yeah, that was I, I purple screened your <laughs> a purple lined your screen for sure. That is a joke. Anybody, y'all don't get scared to death and jump off here. Jeff is Jeff's good, but smart. he ain't that yeah, good. Yeah, he ain't that smart. <laughs> so where's the poll? Do you have a poll? No, we you and I didn't get it. Why do we not get it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, why didn't we get the poll? We don't get the vote. I haven't seen it either. Oh, I see it down here. So what's the tally? Where's that? What's the tally? Oh, that's the three purple lines. That's the poll. Three purple lines. Yes. No kidding. Good job, whoever found out the purple lines. Yeah. Voting failed. Try again. I'm gonna see if I can. Voting failed. Hey, mine says thanks for voting. I voted. It's it's making me vote the way you want me to vote, Jeff. This is like the election all over again. I, I checked whatever box the president, whatever I wanted, and it told me voting failed. Check the other box. Mine disappeared. Huh? I still got it. I, I got three have, purple yeah. lines. It's down there, the little purple lines beside the like button. Yeah. yeah. Mine doesn't work. <laughs> the little purple bars. It looks like a little bar graph in a circle down there, right? Is, that, is that the way it is on everybody's screen? Yeah, it's just a little bars down there. Austin said he doesn't have a pole. It's okay. Click on the purple lines. Follow the little purple lines. <laughs> the little purpy He's got lines Greg found beside the like perfect. button. Correct. <laughs> Mine disappeared. Beside this the comment. Awesome. Y'all are a lot smarter than we are. I'll We're going to have to have a poll every week from now on. It may be something we silly. We've got 111 votes. we got 111 yeah, votes. Yeah, it, it may be something sim- 39% silly. 39% yes, 61% no. There you know, we go. You have that backwards there, bud. Oh, okay, 39% you know, yes. Okay, you're right. Sorry. What are you talking about? No, nothing. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be an awesome addition to the show. So now we have to have a trivia question and a poll question for every show. Every show. Every show. It's going to be a poll question for sure. All right. We uh, (laughs) so it's been a good show. I think we're over fifty minutes now. We're pushing (laughs) pushing the the one hour mark. Uh, Good debate tonight. We need to do more shows like this. Yeah, this is fun. I like getting y'all more involved because I like know everybody's opinion and and you know see where we stand because this gives us a good idea on where the industry stands. Somebody just tried to Facebook. Call me through Messenger. Why didn't you answer? I, it cut off. I don't know. Some, it could have been somebody <laughs> It from might the have show. been Benji wondering where all his money went. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Um, let's see. Uh, any of you guys fishing the? <laughs> the Aaron, the Aaron Finney Claus. asked if he could mail in his vote. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes. sure. We suddenly have 32,000 votes. <laughs> I demand a recount, Jeff, if my side doesn't win. Uh, the Santa Claus event. So if anybody hadn't heard about that. I am fishing the Santa Claus event. <laughs> Are you fishing it? I am fishing it. All right, so I'll be deer hunting. Surprise. But <laughs> Where at? In the woods? <laughs> oh, around here? Yeah. Oh, it's for a charity tournament. It's a good call. It's not. Well, it's for a Guinness Book of World Record. Yeah. So if anybody hadn't heard about this event, I think Pure Fishing's putting it on, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So Pure Fishing's sponsoring this tournament. It's at Lake Norman. I don't know the date. Can you look up the date? Yep, I got it right <laughs> Brian's going to look up the date. So they're actually going to have the Guinness Book of World Records there, and they're going to set a record for the largest fishing tournament where every... The largest Santa Claus bass tournament. And the details are... The details are, you have to fish in a Santa Claus costume. But the whole purpose of it is to set that that new world record of the most Santa Claus costumes in a bass tournament, or yeah, something, something, something. Yeah, a lot of lot of raffle prizes. It, it's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, I have to announce another tournament, and I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my. <laughs> I wonder if I gotta wear a beard because I'm gonna get my. Like jerk bait hooks hung Just up my beard. Just come out of the house, dude. I got you. You got a beard? No. I'm going to spray paint yours white. No. Why not? Ooh. Hey, can we I Clorox? We got your Don Hog wig. Can I bleach your beard? I could just wear the Don Hog wig upside down. <laughs> the hog swag. Yeah. Did you say Don Hog? Yeah. Like yeah, but you got to do something with your red mustache. I'll bleach it. Let, no. let, 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 let Jeff bleach it. No, no, no. You for like good, that? It's you for like, a good call. Was it no. Bruce Willis in that movie Jack? Nah, you gotta have him. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fishing for kids tournament. Also, so Brian just mentioned the Santa Claus event on Lake Norman. Fishing for kids is a tournament that some good friends of ours put on every year down at Lake Wiley. It is December fifth, two thousand twenty. Buster Boyd Bridge blast off at seven o'clock. Sixty dollars per team. What this does? Every hundred dollars raised will provide Christmas for one child. Um, George Hames, his daughter Nikki, um, Turkey Craig from uh, Turkey's Towing down in South Carolina. Uh, standard uh, team tournament, two people per boat, but really, really, really great. Uh, it is a great, great, run. great run event. event. It's uh, proceeds go to Christmas for kids, and, and every hundred dollars raised provides a Christmas for a child that otherwise would not have one. So December fifth, Lake Wiley, uh, Buster Boyd Bridge, seven a.m. takeoff. I believe you can also. Um, you can you can pay in advance or you can pay and sign up the morning of. So uh, be sure to, to jot that tournament down, too, if you're in the area and you're able to jump in that. All right. Where are we at, Thrift? I um, think I can show the results of the poll on the screen. Don't, show do, it. don't do that. No, it's got to be a run on the poll. Actually, we, we quit counting. We quit we'll, counting? We'll start tomorrow. We'll start back tomorrow. Why did we quit? I'm tired. What? They're not coming in anymore. We have 134 votes, though. <laughs> so I like that. Um, all right, let's go to our trivia question, then, if we got nothing else. I think it? I can show it. I'm going to do Jason it. Jason Land, 360. All right, so That's you, know, um, you want to show it or what? I just want to see what happens when I click that button. Click show it. results. Click, click it. it. See if, I mean, y'all let us know if you can see the results of the poll. You can still vote, but I just want to see what happens. Click it. Did you click Show it? Show results. It asked me again. Show results. All right. Let's see if it pops up on our screen. I don't see nothing. <clears throat> Y'all let us know if you see the results of the poll that Jeff ran tonight on uh, how many Santas you ever seen in cargo shorts. It's going to be too cold for cargo yeah, shorts. Yeah, cargo pants, not cargo shorts. You yeah. have to adapt. Yeah. Hmm. Um, predictions on the Toyota Championship. Mark McGuire. What's Ooh. up, Mark? Uh, Lake Cumberland, right? Uh, I predict it to be fun. Lake Cumberland, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm going to say 17 to 18 a day to win. Three days or four days? Three days. Mm. So the pole is down little little purple bars again. See down there? Yeah. Click it. 46 pounds. Mine just says thanks for voting. Voting has ended. You really did stop the poll, didn't you? I don't know. I hear you. 
know. Reed said he can see the results. Mike said I he can see I can't see it. the results. Everybody said they can see it. I guess if you click it, you see the no line is farther along than the yes line. Yes, so. correct. So, no but I need exact numbers, Jeff. Hey, we need exact. He can give you exact numbers. Never done this. Sixty-three percent no. All right, there we go. So how many percent said yes? Thirty-seven. Good job. Goodness. I don't Mosey. Look at him go. He's on his game tonight. <laughs> Look at him. You can't get nothing by him. All right, so the trivia question tonight is uh, for an Angler's Choice hat and hoodie, and uh, we'll get your. Uh, you send us a message with your shipping address, and we'll get that sent over to Trent up at Angler's Choice headquarters in Martinsville, Virginia, and he'll get that shipped out to you. Show Let's, next week. Uh, yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah, it's I'm good. Schedule. Yeah, I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah. Flag football's over. Schedule on the ceiling. Yep, it oh, is. Okay. See the calendar right there. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Right up there cool. by, by the fan. <laughs> so we'll be back next week, and uh, <laughs> we have some interesting topics. This has been a fun show. Give us something that we can that Brian and I can all but get in a fight about. Like, give, y'all give us some ideas. <laughs> yeah, we've we've burned out the frog legs. That's played out. We got to have something uh, else yeah, to fight no, about. Yeah, we can't, we can't do that. <laughs> Frog legs have been going. Yeah, it's been like an eight month battle, yeah. um, which I won. But continue. All right. Well, uh, let's jump into trivia question. Trivia question time for everybody that stayed on to the end of the show. I hadn't even seen the trivia question. What is it? I just want to know what it Do is. You know if you'd ever come up with one. Can you read my handwriting? I can't read this word. What in the world? Can y'all read the answer? Okay. Got it. All right. Got it. Yeah. The trivia question tonight. I'm going to give anybody the power to call the winner. Everybody's got power. Yep. We all, all have right. power? We all have power. Because it gets kind of dicey. <laughs> answers start flying in. You you power has been tricky. bestowed upon me. Why call did you the cover wrong, the answer? Call the, well, you, did you not have it memorized? <laughs> so they can't yeah. see it. What is this? <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Wait, let me see the answer. <laughs> I told you. I've, this is the first time I've ever had the power. Exactly. Can you say it? I got it. All right. Trivia question. Here we go. <laughs> I need to know who and what was the largest margin of victory ever in a Bassmaster Elite tournament. I need to know who it was. Oh, you don't know who it was? I don't either. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll pick the winner. He's got, just so you know, he's I got no longer have a the power. Full question. You read that? <laughs> okay. He's got a two-part question <laughs> with one answer. With one, one answer. answer. <laughs> All right. Oh. Largest margin of victory ever in a Bassmaster Elite tournament. I need to know what it, what the margin of victory was, and I need to know who did it. Okay. I don't. I'm, I don't need to have the location and all that stuff. I need to know who did it and the and exactly what the margin of victory was. Exactly. 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 What the exactly. Was. Exactly. We I got a winner. winner. I got a winner. <laughs> I got a winner. Didn't take long. No, that was a pretty easy question. Who's y'all's it. winner? I hope, Lord, help Devin. us. I, I hope it's Devin the same one Van I got. Devin Van Dalen? Devin Van Dalen. You are champion. Champion. Uh, send us a message to our Facebook page, Devin, with the size shirt that you wear and a shipping address. We'll get it over to Trent at English Choice, and he'll get your hat and your shirt. Uh, sometimes he sends those high-performance hoodies. Maybe Trent. Ooh, those things are nice, Yeah, too. maybe Trent. It is wintertime, so I'll drop a note for you. Uh, for you. Devin to get one of those high performance hoodies since it's getting chilly outside. Brian Thrift, thirty five pounds. Just got that. That would answer. be false. <laughs> that would be false. That would be second place, which is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's answer doesn't even apply to the question though. It's still good though. Oh, still good for second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like exactly. every other incorrect answer. Just so you know. Okay, <laughs> you win nothing, but it's good for second. We have yeah. a winner, guys. It was Patrick Walters, twenty nine pounds, ten ounces, and it just happened in our last event. So yeah, that's it was, pretty, it was a pretty trick. easy one, Matt. Be- before that, well, yeah, but before that, it was a. I mean, I just want to see, you know, how many people follow it super close. <laughs> you can Google that and figure it out. But actually, it's funny because I googled that before the uh, the show tonight, and it came up Rick Clun twenty five pounds, and it was a long, long time ago. Yeah. So it hadn't been updated on all like the you know the gotcha, records gotcha. and all that stuff online. So it was a little tricky if you don't watch the events and pay close attention. That is you very didn't true. Know, um, but, obviously, uh, Devin pays close attention to the he events, does. He and does. he jumped on it. But, hey, look, if I ask a question one night and it goes for 30 minutes, you get mad. No, no, And you're no, like, no, we no. got to give hints. So, that went – I mean, I'm getting a lot of correct answers now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good question. I mean, it was really good. I appreciate that. Matt, two pounds. 
That's incorrect, too. That's a close <laughs> second, Sammy. That's, close second. That's third. That's third. <laughs> Y'all, thanks for tuning in. We will have a show next week. We want to wish each and every one of you a very happy Thanksgiving. Yes. And we appreciate y'all watching. And, oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, Devin just said he's not going to lie. I watched y'all's last show on the way to work when I turned on the new show. <laughs> so it was pretty easy. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. We did announce Thank the answer you. on the last show now that I think about yes, it. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Wow. Well, that just pays. Pays to watch pays past to episodes watch. of LTF. That's what we should do. I, and I said that before. Our trivia questions... Should have something to do with a previous show. Could have been ten shows ago, twelve shows ago. It starts to reward our top fans and our consistent viewers. <laughs> I'm still laughing. Why y'all looking at me like I'm short stupid. torso? <laughs> <laughs> y'all happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate y'all tuning in, and we can't. When we just can't, full disclosure. We, I don't we, know if this is, <laughs> if we're going to have an outro or not. I got no clue what's going to happen. When we can't go fishing. We'll do what, Brian? Talk fish. See y'all next week. We're going to give this a shot. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.